freedom. What's up, man? <laughs> My full name is Jeremy Kyle Pike. I worked on the DOC Department of Corrections and I saw some kid who had been shot in the stomach. He had fucking tried to rob somebody. They shot him back with like a 44 Magnum in the stomach and it totally just destroyed all his intestines. He got horrible infections and when I saw him, it was so far into this recovery from the gunshot wound, this whole entire abdomen, there's no skin on it at all. It was one big giant dressing and I went there with the doctor and took the dressing off and it was a phallus smelling it smelled like rotten fruit, just like sweet and putrid and dank. You just filled your nostrils with this necrotic smell of death, living death. And as you can see, his abdominal muscles and parts of his intestines were in there. Insane, man. And the kid's like 20 years old. I guess I graduated December of 07, but I actually passed my boards in February of 08. So two years, four months, actual registered nurse. You break somebody's rib when you're pumping on their chest, you can feel it in your body, the reverberation. And it never gets comfortable. It's always queasy. Ugh. It's almost like scratching the nails on the chalkboard kind of feeling. Seriously, man. I mean, little old ladies. If you're the first one to com do compressions on them, bad. It is what it is, though. I mean, they want to keep living. You know? 90 years old and still ready to keep living. So, if your body tries to die, you get your ribs broken the fuck up. By me. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> her biggest problem was respiratory her only problem really her heart was great her blood pressure was perfect her skin looked like oh it's pink and normal great perfusion uh, but she had respiratory problems and bad infection just neurological was gone so her family came in and made a decision to withdraw care on her and the respiratory therapist came in and we extubated her took the breathing tube out just breathing by herself totally. Her stats were 99% on the monitor. Oxygen saturation. It's like a little monitor you finger to tell us how much oxygen your hemoglobin's carrying. One minute later, her stats were zero. I watched her and the color drain out of her. Whole face went pale. Lips started turning blue, her whole face turned blue. She wasn't oxygenating. She was ventilating, but not oxygenating. Yeah, she died pretty fast. Five minutes later, I mean, it was cool because you could watch her heart rate. And you, you, her rhythm change into all these different rhythms and starts getting slow and slower and slower. It goes from like 80 down to 40, down to 30, down to 20. And then you can see the last ditch ever from the body, that one final kick. Come on, let's get out of this. Heart speeds like up, goes over 100, and then flatline done. It's guaranteed to happen. You never know when. That's why you gotta live your fucking life day by day, you know? You never know if you're gonna wake up, right? Tomorrow never knows.
in some pretty powerful situations where you're able to help the family accept the death of their loved one and just kind of be there for them emotionally. It's weird. You make a connection with a family. You take care of the person who's dying and then help them see that it's not a bad thing. Just a natural part of life. If they still hope, they still think there's hope, then I don't want to fuck with that because it's a powerful thing. And for me to come from an outsider point of view and I'm just there for 12 hours and I've never lived with this person or know what's going on and what's going on in their head, that's hard. So I don't really approach the subject unless it's guaranteed the patient's not coming back. Which is often the youngest, my youngest patient to die, 18 years old, uh, leukemia. I had two 18 year olds with leukemia. That's sad. Kind of weird seeing somebody younger than you die, taking care of them. Especially when it's still at a point in my life where I feel like the world still got the world in front of us. You know? No place is boring if you've had a good night's sleep and have a pocket full of unexposed film. Robert Adams said that. <laughs> <laughs> I took my first picture probably when I was a kid with one of those old Polaroids that come out snap out the picture and the, expo uh, the self-exposing ones it allows you to see the world instead of just looking at it even when you're not taking pictures you still look at everything differently from a different point of view the aesthetics and the beauty of everything allowed a moment to live on. I'm not a good drawer. I can never visualize art on a paper like that. I'm sure I could if I put a lot of thought into it, but naturally I'm more of a sculptor. Which is silly because you read about all the great masters and they never had it all. Anybody who sculpts has a drawing base, you should because you should be able to draw what you want to see. So I guess I'm a ghetto amateur sculptor. <laughs> Intriguing. Something inside me wants to fly. I mean, God damn it, man, that's the only fucking way I can. Is by throwing myself out of a plane. <laughs>
be positive and love. Open your heart and let love in and let love out. What's wrong with that, man? How can anybody, how can one person say that what I believe in is wrong when I really believe it with all my heart? And I feel it. How can we both be wrong, right? You know, to each, to each his own. That's my biggest thing. As long as you're positive, believe whatever you want. Be happy and fucking love. Live your life in love.